मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टेल मी वॉइस एंड वीडियो इज क्लियर और नॉट हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टेल मी द वॉइस एंड वीडियो इज क्लियर और नॉट आई थिंक वॉइस एंड वीडियो इज क्लियर सो वी विल कंटिन्यू विल कंटिन्यू ओके ओके स्टूडेंट्स सो आई होप वॉइस एंड वीडियो इज क्लियर प्लीज टेल मी यस ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मिसिलेनियस टॉपिक्स ओके before going to miscellaneous topics i we will uh, we will quickly revise the formulas of previous session okay so tell me tell me guys tell me what is the formula <coughs> no 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 i am fine prabhaka okay now tell me tell me uh, what is the formula for when 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 we have a okay okay tell me what is the formula when there is a uplift when there is a uplift when we provide when we provide a drainage gallery okay what will be the length length below drainage gallery tell me guys what is the length of length of this your uplift diagram what will be the dense length of uplift diagram here at the bottom of the bottom of this drainage gallery what will be the length tell me guys tell me guys what will be the length when we provide when we provide the drainage gallery okay so if we have a water head of of capital h at upstream and we have a water depth water depth is small h small h in the tail water then here what is the length of this what is the length of this <coughs> length of this is gamma w capital h and its length is gamma w small h what is its what is the length below drainage gallery very good prabhakar gamma w h plus 1 by 3 gamma w capital h minus gamma w small h very good very good okay so it is gamma w small h plus 1 by 3 gamma w capital h minus gamma w small h okay so this will be the length this will be the length very good very good prabhakar very good now now tell me guys tell me guys what are that three condition so for for first is for no tension condition for no tension condition what should be the what should be our base width what should be our base width okay our base width should be greater than or equal to how much greater than or equal to how much for no tension condition tell me guys for no tension condition our width base width of the dam will be equals to will be equals to <coughs> tell me capital h divided by divided by what is the yes very good very good prabhakar now tell me the formula for no tension condition for no tension condition what should be the formula <coughs> h divided by h divided by whether it will be a root over or will not take a root over tell me tell me very good aman very good prabhakar this will be root over g minus c now tell me for for second is for no sliding condition for no sliding condition what will be the base width base width should be greater than or equal to base width should be greater than or equal to very good h divided by mu g minus c now for limiting height of the dam third is limiting height of the dam tell me limiting limiting height of the dam what will be the formula for limiting height of the dam h will be equals to h will be equals to or less than h will be equals to or less than 
वेरी गुड एफ गामा डब्लू एफ गामा डब्लू एफ गामा डब्लू जी माइनस सी प्लस वन ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड अमन वेरी गुड विवेक वेरी गुड यार वेरी गुड ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री कंडीशन दैट वी स्टडीड यस्टरडे ओके एंड नाउ नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस प्लीज प्लीज राइट द राइट द राइट द टॉपिक दैट इज कैनाल हेडवर्क दैट इज कैनाल हेडवर्क और वी विल स्टडी डायवर्जन हेडवर्क ओके डायवर्जन हेडवर्क ओके मेनली वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी डायवर्जन हेडवर्क ओके सो देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ हेडवर्क डायवर्जन हेडवर्क वन इज डायवर्जन हेडवर्क ओके एंड सेकेंड विल बी योर स्टोरेज हेडवर्क सेकेंड इज योर स्टोरेज हेडवर्क ओके सो सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्टोरेज हेडवर्क एंड डायवर्जन हेडवर्क टेल मी गाइज टेल मी गाइज वॉट इज द वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्टोरेज हेडवर्क एंड एंड डायवर्जन हेडवर्क ओके तो अगर स्पिल वे इज अ फुल फुल कोर्स इन फुल कोर्स वी स्टडी स्पिल वे In crash course, we will not going to study spillway. Okay. Now tell me, tell me, uh, what is the difference between diversion headwork and storage headwork? Good morning, Manish. Tell me. So headwork. What is headwork? Okay. What is headwork? So, so as I told you, as I told you, when I'll explaining the very good, very good, Aman. When I'll explaining the syllabus, that time I told you that. The, that storage headwork storage headwork is a example is dam okay storage headwork we have example as dam here we have here we have so many uses so many multi purpose multi purpose use okay storage headwork gives you the multi purpose use okay for with the help of storage headwork you can store the water you can divert the water to a canal then you can you can generate electricity and so on so on okay but the main aim of diversion headwork is to divert the water from river to any canal okay so we are mainly focus on diversion headwork we are mainly focus on diversion headwork okay very good aman now now how how this diversion headworks looks like okay so this is our river okay river is flowing like this this is our river and it is flowing like this okay it is flowing like this and and this will be the this will be the path of a river okay this will be a path of a river okay so so as you know as you know if i want if i want that okay if this is this is water okay consider this is petrol okay Okay. Yes, Prabhakar. If the if the questions comes from these topic, then you can easily able to answer that question. Okay. But the question comes from a spillway, then you have to prepare extra notes. Okay. Along with that, Prabhakar, please uh, please uh, done all the previous year question so that I will assure you that you can easily easily score full marks. in irrigation subject for gate 2022 okay okay if you if you go through all previous year questions all previous year questions along with these notes solve all previous year questions also okay because because <coughs> that will that will guide you okay now now if this is not a water it will be petrol okay consider that this is petrol petrol is very very costly nowadays so if i want to fill a petrol in this i'll put a funnel i put a funnel why i am putting a funnel why we will put a funnel why we are why we will put a funnel <coughs> for for bottle to fill something to fill something and that will not spill out of that bottle okay so funnel will use to guide us funnel will use to guide us and petrol is very costly so we will not want that petrol will spill okay petrol will spill 
so that's why i applied a funnel okay so that all the particles of the petrol goes to in this bottle only not outside this bottle okay so so same thing here also will provide a guide bank will provide a guide bank and this is a guide bank this is known as guide bank okay this will be a guide bank guide bank please write guide bank okay and and along with this along with this we will provide a marginal bonds also okay why so that all the flow will goes through this diversion head work okay so marginal 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 head works marginal bonds will be look like this okay these are the marginal bonds these are the marginal bonds okay so that all the flow all the flow will go through this this your diversion head work okay so this is called this is called marginal bonds this is called marginal bonds okay this is called marginal bonds okay and we have we have a off taking canal also we will have one off taking canal otherwise otherwise what is the use of diversion head work otherwise what is the use of diversion head work because we are providing diversion head work so that i can divert some amount of water some amount of water to my off taking canal okay so consider that so for raising the water level for raising the water level we will build we will build one weir or barrage okay now what is weir and what is barrage okay so we will see the components of components of diversion head work components of diversion head work okay components of diversion head work okay so this is just a just your crash course okay you can you can join a full course also if you want if you are serious okay and you want to be your uh, time table should be a perfect perfect if you want a perfect time table and you want that you will succeed this year so you can join a paid course otherwise you can you can follow a crash course also okay it will also guide you but in the crash course you have to study hard along with these lectures you should study hard because you know guys your time is money your time is money so you have whether you have to spend a money or you have to spend your time for searching the for searching the content okay for searching the questions okay for the searching of the syllabus okay so now now we have we have a wear here we have a wear or this will be a wear or a barrage this will be a wear or a barrage or barrage okay so what is the function of this wear and barrage tell me guys what is the function why we are providing a wear and barrage okay first i'll draw the diagram first i'll draw the diagram full diagram of diversion head work okay and this will be my this will be my uh, okay i'll construct with this okay this okay and this will be my this will be my divide wall this will be my divide wall okay this will be my divide wall and this is your fish ladder this is your fish ladder okay this will be the fish ladder so that fish can pass through this diversion head work okay this is our fish ladder okay this is the fish ladder and this green one is a divide wall so i'll write i'll write okay that this blue one is a fish ladder fish ladder okay this will be the divide wall okay i'll tell all the functions of the divide wall very good very good to raise the head to raise the head so that we can so that we can easily divert the water okay if water is if water is in pounding situation okay if water is flowing if water is flowing 
then it is difficult to divert that water okay it is difficult to divert that water but if water is pounding is water is pounding in something or in some area so we can easily divert that water with we can easily divert that water okay so here here is a under sluice here we have a under sluice also why we are providing a under sluice why we are not providing a weir in both the sides because weir is a permanent structure okay what is weir what is weir so we will see here what is weir okay we will see here what is weir wow it is like tongue twister okay now now so weir is like a structure weir is like this structure which is having a gate also which is having a gate at the at the uppermost part of the weir okay so this is the structure part this will be your structure this will be your structure and this will be your gate so sir what is the difference what is the difference between weir and barrage so the main difference is that here gate part is very less in weir we have a less gate part and more part is of structure like permanent structure but in barrage what happens the structure is very low structure is very small structure and over that small structures we have a long gates we have a long gates okay so who is most costly more costly this will be the barrage this will be the barrage okay this will be your barrage in this in this in this this will be a gate this will be your gate okay and this will be the structure this will be the structure okay so so i hope it is clear that what is barrage and what is weir now tell me which is more costly whether i will provide a weir or a barrage which is more costly which is more costly weir is more costly or barrage is more costly as you see in barrage gate part is more in weir gate part is less in weir structural part is more in barrage structural part is less so what is more costly a gate or a bar or a structure which is more costly a structure or a very good very good barrage is more costly because of gate because it is having a more gate part and less structural part okay so i will say that this is costly this is costly this is costly okay but we have one advantage with the barrage with the barrage we have one advantage what is that tell me tell me what is the advantage of providing barrage is it it is costly it is costlier than we are but but there is there is one advantage what is that what is that guys what is that advantage what is that advantage we have in barrage and we have a disadvantage in weir okay so we can adjust these gates we can adjust these gates okay so we have a more control on barrage we have a more control more control barrage provides more control it is costly but it provides more control over the depth more control over the depth okay more control over depth okay because we can adjust the gate we can adjust the height of the gate we can adjust the height of the gate and here the adjusting part is very less in weir okay so weir we have less control less control but less costly in barrage we have more control but it is costly okay so what is that blue part what is that structure so it is known as under sluice okay it is known as under sluice please write this is as under sluice okay this is your please write okay this is your under sluice now now we will see what is the function of that what is the function of function of these components okay what is the function of these components okay this is your under sluice please write please write the diagram please write the diagram okay okay so i hope this is done now now we have one off taking canal also 
we have one of taking canal also okay so if these are my marginal bonds and these are my guide bonds okay so now now this is my this will be this will be my off taking canal okay this will be my off taking canal okay this will be my off taking canal please write this is the off taking canal off taking canal okay so what happens in this off taking canal what happens so we have a canal head work here we have a canal head work here canal head work okay now we will see what is the work so you know what is the work of weir and barrage they are used to used to raise the head they are used to raise the head what is the use of that fish ladder so that fish can move from upstream to downstream and from downstream to upstream okay okay so these are very small posts these are very small spacing small spacing this is having okay and this will be the divide wall this will be your divide wall so what is the use of that divide wall so this divide wall will provide a still pocket okay yeah here here it is having a still pocket means there will be no wave effect okay there will be no turbulence so we, this divide wall will provide a still pocket a still pond okay still pond in the head of the canal head work okay or in the head of the canal it provide a still pocket what is the use of that still pocket what is the use of that still pocket okay which this divide wall is providing what is the use of that still pocket so i told you i told you that silting and scouring are the main problem okay so it eliminates the problem of silting why because of still pocket all the silt got settled down all the silt got settled down i hope this is clear guys all the silt got settled down so that so that the water which entered in the canal is is not having more silt okay because more or more silt is got sedimented near your canal head okay guys okay guys and answer if 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 some amount of silt enters so what device should we install so there will be a silt silt extractor please write okay we are we provide a silt extractor here okay please write it is called silt extractor or it is called silt excluder okay so we will provide a silt extractor or silt excluder at the head of the canal so that silt will not entered in the canal okay sir if some amount of silt got entered in the canal so which device we have to install so we have one more device which is installed installed inside the canal okay inside the canal and that is known as silt ejector that is known as silt ejector please write please write okay now what is the use of under sluice we'll see we will see the use of under sluice also okay so the use of marginal bonds and guide bond is to guide the water guide the river water to this diversion head work use of weir is to raise the water level use of fish ladder is for movement of fishes divide wall will provide a silent pocket now now we have a canal head work so that we can regulate the water in the off taking canal next what is the silt extractor or silt excluder it will now it is provided on head of the canal it is very important question sometimes ask in the exam that where silt ejector or where silt extractor is installed okay so silt extractor is installed at the head of the canal and silt ejector is installed in the canal okay okay guys now what is the use of that under sluice okay so so as we have a weir here under sluice is nothing but it is your shutter is it is like a shutter okay it is like a 
shutter okay which which move upwards which move upwards okay so under sluice during a flood during the flood under sluice passes will open that under sluice so that so that maximum flow will pass through that opening okay otherwise what happen our structure will fail our structure will fail okay and another use of under sluice is that we are having a silent pocket here we are going to deposit all the silt here so that so that when the when the silt amount is when the silt amount is significant significant amount of silt got deposited near your under sluice then we will open the under sluice so that silt can pass through that structure okay so this is the working of under sluice if you want you can take a screenshot i hope the functions of and the name of components which are in the diversion hard work is clear to you guys is clear to you guys if you have any doubt you can ask me if you have any doubt you can ask me i hope this is done i hope this is done guys okay so we'll move to the next topic so we'll move to the next topic okay i hope this is done i hope this is done now we will see the seepage theory also we will seepage theory okay so if this is any wear okay if this is any wear we have this much okay if this is the surface and above that we have a wear okay so this will be the wear this will be the wear okay and we are going to we are going to store this much head of water okay we are going to store this much head of water okay wait wait we'll construct a good wear okay so if this is a wear this is our wear and it is having it is having this much this much height of water okay it is having this much height of water okay so as i told you water 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 is difficult to store is difficult to store a flowing water it is difficult to store because water always runs okay water is like our mind okay a water always run always run okay so so this is the water stored okay if i drop some water it will be evaporate it will be evaporate and it will it will run okay it will run so water is also having a properties like that that it will not it will not be stored okay it will be cyclic in nature okay as i as i told you in hydrological cycle water is like water will water neither be created nor be destroyed only changing the state from one to another okay so so we have a h height of water and this water wants to go that side want to go that side okay so it will it will undermine it it will undermine the surface and and the failure of wear failure of wear is possible and the failure of wear is possible due to that piping due to that piping or or because of uplift because of uplift also because of because here is a water stored so water will water will want that i want to go there okay water will want to go there so how how we can avoid the piping how we can avoid the piping so to avoid the piping so to avoid a piping we have a first theory that is blake's theory please write first is your blake's theory okay so what blake's theory told it is it tells that yes 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 okay now now we are piping quick sand same okay now now what blake's told that if we if we increase the if we increase the length of this traveling okay if if we are not providing a concrete floor then it is easy for the water to go there okay it is easy for the water but blake told that if we increase the length of travel if we increase the length of travel we can we can uh, we can avoid failures we can avoid failures so he told that 
he told that we should provide we should provide the cut off we should provide the that piles we should uh, provide piles okay so according to blake we should provide three piles okay we should provide three piles okay one at upstream one should be at upstream okay so and one it at intermediate pile and another is provided at downstream okay so if this is having d1 depth okay if this is having d1 depth d1 depth okay and this pile is having d2 depth and this pile is having d3 depth and b is the total width then b is the total width okay then how much how much length water should travel so now water will enter from here okay like this okay then water goes like this then water goes like this and then water goes like this and then water reach to another end now now water has to travel very good sheet piles these are called sheet piles okay so so here water has to travel how many distance this is known as creep length this is known as creep length please write creep length okay this is the blake's creep theory the full name of blake's theory is for blake's creep theory okay so now tell me what will be that creep length what will be that creep length creep length is the water length okay water length how much it is how much it is tell me guys how much length this water will travel to reach the downstream point tell me guys tell me guys i give you d1 d2 d3 b use or uh, use these d1 d2 d3 and b and tell me what will be the creep length tell me what will be the creep length okay and h is the head h is the head h is the head of the water so creep length will be equals to creep length will be equals to 2d1 okay 2d1 because water entering here and want to travel from here to here then this will be this will be your 2d1 plus 2d2 plus 2d3 plus b okay 2d3 plus b so this will be the creep length this will be the creep length okay this will be the creep length now now tell me what will be the loss of head what will be the loss of head so we want that this much amount of head will last up to this point otherwise otherwise what happens failure of wear will be possible failure of the wear will be possible okay if we not provide if we will not provide the the length properly then the failure will be possible so what will be the head loss head loss is h upon l h upon this l okay so how how this head will loss how this head will loss okay so so uh, now consider that here we having a head like this okay here we have a head like this okay so because of d1 because of d1 this head will be this head will be lost this head will be lost okay this this much amount of head will be lost okay now because of this horizontal traveling of water some amount of head will loss okay now now because of this pile some amount of head will loss now again again we will uh, going to provide a horizontal distance okay then then again because of this pile water should travel so by this pattern my head will be lost okay by this pattern my head will be lost okay i hope this is clear okay 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 that l1 l2 you can you can provide like this you can give l1 l2 also no problem no problem you can mention in the place of b you can mention l1 l2 okay no problem now 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 okay so this is this is your this is your about your 
Blake's theory. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Now, what should be the thickness of this? Now, what should be the thickness of this floor? Okay. We are providing a concrete floor. We are providing the concrete floor at the upstream end and as well as in the downstream end. Okay. So, what should be the depth? What should be the thickness? So, for that we have one more formula that for T thickness, for T thickness, how uh, is equals to, is equals to H upon G minus 1. Okay. And if you are want to provide a design thickness, design thickness, then this will be equals to 4 by 3 H upon G minus 1. Okay. 4 by 3 H upon G minus 1. Okay. So, this is the formula for floor thickness. This is the formula for floor thickness. Please write floor thickness. Okay. T is the thickness of the floor. Okay. I hope this is clear guys. I hope if you have any doubt you can ask me. If you have any doubt you can ask me. Tell me guys any doubt? Any doubt? So, you have no doubts? No doubts? So, we will we will solve one question. Please write one question. At a certain point, please write one question. At a certain point, at a certain point, in the floor of the VR, in the floor of the VR, okay, at the certain point, in the floor of the VR, the uplift pressure head due to C page is 4.5. The uplift pressure head due to C page is 4.5. And if the relative density of the concrete, if the relative density of the concrete is 2.5, okay. So, we have H as 4.5 and we have G as 2.5. Now tell me, now tell me the minimum thickness of the floor required at this point to counteract the uplift is. Okay. So, what is the, what is the minimum thickness of the floor we want to provide? Tell me for minimum thickness use this formula if any in any question if they ask you design thickness then go for this one then go for this one okay now tell me what will be the what will be the thickness what will be the thickness very good 3 meter okay how it is 3 meter so h is 4.5 g is 2.5 minus 1, so 4.5 divided by 1.5, this will be 3 meter, okay. So, thickness should be 3 meter, please write, thickness should be 3 meter, okay. So, this is about, this is about your Blake's theory. Now, there will be one more theory, one more theory, that is, that is called, please write, Lane's theory, please write, Lane's theory, okay. So, we have a Lane's theory also, Lane's theory after Blake's theory, there will be a Lane weighted theory, okay, Lane's, Lane's weighted theory, Lane's weighted theory, okay. So, in this what happens, in Lane's weighted theory, we will uh, weighted the, we will weighted the vertical as Lane's told that Vertical, vertical distance, vertical distance is more effective as compared to your horizontal creep, okay. Your vertical creep is more effective than horizontal creep, okay. So, he, he has given, he has given the vertical as 1 and, and for horizontal as 1 by 3, okay. So, he has given the weightage for horizontal creep as 1 by 3 and for vertical creep it is 1, okay. For vertical creep it will be 1. Now tell me guys, tell me guys, 
Now according to lens, what will be the creep length? According to lens, what will be the creep length? Tell me according to lane weighted theory, what will be the creep length? According to lane weighted theory, what will be the creep length? Tell me guys, so according to this creep length will be equals to creep length will be equals to 2d1 plus 2d2 plus 2d3 plus plus b by 3 very good very good Alex very good b by 3 okay. But, but what happens during 1920 to 1926 okay during 1920 to 1926 okay because before 1920 most of the wear are constructed according to this Blake's theory okay but during this session what happens most of the wear now facing the failure most of the wear are facing a failure so one more scientist came that is Khosla Khosla's theory okay then Khosla's theory will come okay because of because of failure of many wears during this session the, during this time interval many wears got fail many wears got fail which are designed by Blake theory so so Khosla introduced one more theory okay so Khosla Khosla told that Khosla told that there will be no use of this vertical there will be no use of this upstream 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 sheet pile are less effective khosla told that upstream piles are less effective as compared to downstream pile okay next is that next is next khosla told that if if this intermediate okay now now if this intermediate okay if this intermediate pile is not more than is not more than if it is not more than the length of upstream pile then it will be ineffective because water will not Khosla told that water will not go like this water will be going like this okay water will go like this okay Khosla told that water will go like this so so your intermediate pile should be longer than your upstream pile okay and he introduced one exit gradient okay that if we provide that exit gradient okay we provide that exit gradient okay so it will uh, if the gradient if it is more than okay if exit gradient is more than critical gradient what is the critical gradient guys tell me how to calculate the critical gradient how to calculate the critical gradient okay so introduce one exit gradient formula that this exit gradient should not be more than the critical gradient if the exit gradient will be more than this critical gradient then our wear will fail our wear will fail so tell me what is the formula for criti critical gradient you already know guys you already know what is the formula for critical gradient you already studied in the soil subject okay so I'll tell you the exit gradient formula I'll tell you the exit gradient formula this will be the formula for exit gradient 2 pi I think there will be a 2 pi h by d 1 upon 1 upon pi 1 upon pi root over lambda 1 upon pi root over lambda and what is the value of lambda what is the value of lambda so lambda is 1 plus 1 plus lambda is 1 plus root over 1 plus alpha by 2 okay and what is alpha alpha is nothing but alpha is 
b by d alpha is b by d so what is b b is the width and d is the depth of downstream pile d is the depth of downstream pile very good anil kumar critical gradient formula is g minus 1 upon 1 plus e very good very good b by d yes b by d and <coughs> what is that b b is the total width and what is d d is the depth of this d is the depth of downstream okay depth of downstream pile okay please write this please write this this is the formula for exit gradient and exit gradient should not be more than critical gradient okay exit gradient should not be more than critical gradient so sometimes they will ask you the question that if if we are not providing downstream pile means if d is equals to 0 then what should be the value of exit gradient tell me what will be the value of exit gradient whether it will be 0 it will be 1 it will be infinity or none of the above tell me or difficult to calculate <coughs> if we are not providing this downstream pile if we will not provide this downstream pile my exit gradient will be infinity because this d is 0 if d is 0 it is h by 0 so it will anything divided by 0 will gives you infinity okay so if we not provide this this will be infinity and this will be more than this critical gradient and and the piping will occur okay piping will occur and our our wear will fail our wear will fail okay now tell me i am giving you one question for for this exit gradient okay esc 2016 question please write please write ESC 2016 question. Okay, so the question is, question is, a 20 meter long, a 20 meter long, please write, a 20 meter long horizontal concrete floor, a 20 meter long horizontal concrete floor. Okay. next is next is under a barrage under a barrage <coughs> under a barrage on a permeable under a barrage on a permeable foundation permeable foundation okay you have to tell me what is the given data what is the value of b what will be the value of d okay that's why i am dictating very slowly okay so the question is a 20 meter long horizontal concrete floor under a barrage on a permeable foundation foundation retains a retains a 5 meter retains a 5 meter head of water <coughs> retains a 5 meter head of water and has a <coughs> and has a has a 5 meter deep downstream end pile and has a 5 meter deep downstream downstream end pile end pile the exit gradient is the exit gradient is okay so you have to find exit gradient options are 1 by 4 b is 1 by 5 c x c is please write c is sorry c is 1 by 6 and d is 1 by 8 okay now tell me now tell me what will be the value of what will be the value of tell me what will be the value of b what will be the value of b what will be the value of b okay what will be the value of d what will be the value of h what will be the value of alpha what will be the value of lambda and what is the value of exit gradient okay okay
ओके टेल मी गाइस व्हाट इज द व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एग्जिट ग्रेडिएंट व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एग्जिट ग्रेडिएंट now tell me what is the length what will be the value of b what will be the value of b this is 20 meter what is the value of d this is 5 meter what is the value of h this is 5 meter now tell me what is the value of alpha what is the value of alpha yes yaar abhi now i'll teach slowly okay it is slowly i think you are fast now tell me what is alpha what is alpha alpha is b by d alpha is b by d so b is 20 20 and d is 5 so tell me what is the value of alpha what is the value of alpha very good 4 very good uh, alex answer is correct answer is correct okay now now alpha is 4 tell me what is lambda what is lambda lambda is lambda is 1 plus 1 plus <coughs> under root 1 plus alpha by 2 and this will be equals to this will be equals to 5 root over 5 root over 5 plus 1 divided by 2 so what is the value what is the value of lambda tell me very good alex it is 2.56 2.56 now tell me what is the value of exit gradient put all the values all the values okay so exit gradient is equals to h by d h by d 1 by pi root over lambda okay so h is h is 5 h is 5 d is 5 okay 1 upon pi root over lambda is how much 2.56 okay now tell me what is the value tell me what is the value okay so 2 point root over 2.56 is 1.6 1.6 multiply with 3.14 this will be 1 1 so this will be equals to 1 by 5 because 1.6 into 3 4.8 and pi value is 1.34 so it is near about 5 so it will be 1 by 5 exit gradient is 1 by 5 i hope this is clear i hope this is clear guys okay done done i hope this is clear done okay so this is about your irrigation this is about your irrigation engineering if you have any doubt you can ask me okay if you have any problems for focusing or if you have any confusion in your mind that sir i should go for ssc whether i will go for gate or i will go for ese which 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 exam i will target okay and which course is suitable for me whether i have to self study or go with the paid course you can ask me any doubt you can ask me any doubt guys If you have any doubt you can ask me Okay So you guys is not having any doubt so we are going to wrap up this session and all the best for your ESE exam do well and enjoy okay and stay motivated stay energetic okay and always focus on your aim okay o always focus on your aim which you want to achieve okay so bye students bye students